Today, folks, some bombs were dropped for Nintendo Switch 2. We have brand new reports coming out of Video Game Chronicle and Eurogamer. I can't believe that this is the news we're starting today with. It is so exciting. I absolutely wasn't going to wait until our Prime News episode later today. We have to get this out now. Oh, man, it looks like the Nintendo Switch 2 is possibly even more powerful than I anticipated it would be. What am I talking about? Well, we're about to dive in. First, I just got to remind you, we are trying to hit 150,000 subscribers this year. So if you would like to subscribe to the channel, that would be great. You're helping us get to our goal, especially if you enjoy the video. Drop that like and all of that, you know, as they sometimes call it, the validation button. And you know what? Let's just get right into this news. So these Nintendo Switch 2 details are now being reported by Tom Phillips at Eurogamer and Andy Robinson at Video Game Chronicle. Now, to note, these guys were also right on top of the NX reports back in 2016 on it being a hybrid system, on the timing of when it was going to come out, the power. So they clearly have some connections, even if you want to look at how they've been wrong in the past talking about maybe when certain games might come up. But when it comes to hardware, they've been on top of this stuff the entire time. They were on top of the Switch Lite and the Switch OLED. So these two seem to be pretty in the know or at least have enough developer connections to be in the know when it comes to hardware. And for our purposes, we're actually going to focus more on the Video Game Chronicle report primarily from Andy Robinson, not just because he's the one who gave us some details already about a month ago, but because it actually contains a bit more information than the Eurogamer report does. But we will clarify which aspects of this Eurogamer actually you know, corroborates. That way we know we have multiple sources, independent sources on some aspects, and then we have one primary news outlet source on the rest and who knows maybe throughout the day the floodgates are about to open up and we're about to get all of this stuff confirmed by a bunch of different places so it's entirely possible that we are just at the tip of what's about to be a flood of information over the next 24 hours and any additional stuff that comes out we'll put it in our prime news episode later today now that all being said, Nintendo was showing off tech demos for the Nintendo Switch successor at Gamescom to privately selected developers. So Nintendo, you know, it's been talked about how they had a massive private booth. A lot of people didn't know what was going on in there besides, uh, you know, demos of things like Super Mario Wonder, right? There was a, a media area for that. But there was an area that only developers were being allowed into and had very high security. We knew about this. It's been reported by many outlets. Okay, cool. Nintendo had a nice private area in the business section. What was being shown? Well, the Switch successor was actually there and being shown privately at Gamescom with demos. This was not just a, here's a spec sheet and will you get on board? No, they wanted to show what this system is capable of from a technical perspective. Eurogamo and Video Game Chronicle both heard that one of the demos shown off was an enhanced version of Breath of the Wild running at higher frame rates and resolution, though there wasn't any suggestion that this version of the game will actually come out. So... I mean, I would say there's probably a better than not chance that it does. But anyways, it's just a demo for, you know, demo purposes. Now, when you hear that, that might not sound extremely impressive. After all, it were, it's like a Wii U title, right? Running at higher frame rates and resolution. So it doesn't sound like it's something that would be that impressive. But then again, we don't know if they had ray tracing or other crazy things going on. But there's not a lot of details in these articles about the Breath of the Wild demo, maybe because... That isn't the, the, the that's not really the main the, the main attraction. You see, according to Video Game Chronicle, and this is the other demo because Eurogamer mentioned that there were multiple demos, but didn't really detail the second demo. Video Game Chronicle did, and that is because they showed off something that impressed everyone who saw it. They showed off the Unreal Engine Five demo from Epic Games featuring The Matrix Awakens which was a tech showcase that was originally created to show off the power of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X in 2021. And it's a demo which many today still feel looks impressive compared to most of the cross-gen titles we have seen on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X over the years. Now, having the demo isn't necessarily a big deal. 
Steam Deck is also able to run this demo, but on Steam Deck, it does look notably degraded, right? There's no ray tracing. The upscaling isn't that great with FSR. It just, it, it doesn't, you could just sort of tell it looks like it's trying to run the demo on PlayStation 4 hardware. So again, having this demo in that of itself isn't impressive, but it's what this demo looked like and what it was showcasing. That is. Now... The developers did suggest the demo was running at the target specs of the next system, whatever those specs are. Again, we weren't given exact specifications on what the specs of the system is. But the demo was said to have been running NVIDIA's DLSS technology, and apparently Nintendo brought this up themselves. Uh, now, the v Video Game Chronicle article originally said uh, DLSS 3.5, but they have since removed that remark. We're not sure why they removed it. There was no clarification. It could either have just been a mistake in an assumption or the exact version of DLSS might not have been confirmed or it is 3.5, but they didn't want to mention 3.5 because it might not be the full 3.5 feature set. As an example, it's very unlikely frame regeneration was part of this. If you don't know what that is, you can go Google it. It's very unlikely this next system does that, but that is a feature of DLSS 3.5. So maybe it was DLSS 3.5, or maybe it's just DLSS 3.0, or DLSS 2.0. We don't actually know. You know. DLSS has been mentioned for a while, but clearly a version of DLSS was being used, and Nintendo did bring it up, and maybe they said it was DLSS 3.5. I guess we'll have to wait for further clarification on that. That being said... What's really, really crazy about this is what impressed the devs and is that the demo was using advanced ray tracing and Nintendo made sure to show this feature was enabled. So the big thing here is that Nintendo wanted developers to know this demo is running on our hardware with advanced ray tracing features. Now remember, NVIDIA does have a major advantage with ray tracing over the AMD counterparts. This has been shown across the board every generation of hardware. So potentially, I, I hate to say this, but Switch has a chance to maybe have better ray tracing capabilities than the other platforms. It's just a chance. It's probably not because it's not going to have as many RT cores as, as stuff happening with the, the PlayStation 5. But I'm just saying the fact that they knew it was turned on and the fact that they said this statement, multiple developers stated this, the visuals of this Matrix demo were comparable to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. That's right. They looked at this demo running on this hardware, and they're like, dude, this looks like the PlayStation 5 demo. This is now the second reference we've had, this time from legit reporters, that, X, that, that the Nintendo Switch 2 is producing something that reminds people of PlayStation 5. Wow. Now, this is important to note that this demo does run on Steam Deck, but it obviously doesn't come close to looking like the PlayStation 5 version. We mentioned this before. On the Series S, though, the demo actually runs at 540p and it wasn't upscaled very well and didn't really have good ray tracing. So this apparently looks more impressive than the Xbox Series S version, which is... Damn. Now, more than this, while most reports, including a report this year from Video Game Chronicle, did suggest the plan was to release the Nintendo Switch 2 in the second half of next year, right? This has been the universal thing reported out there. Eurogamer's Tom Phillips claims when it comes to launch timing, they now have come to understand that Nintendo themselves is keen to launch the system sooner than second half of 2024, if possible so he's essentially saying nintendo wants to launch this in the first half of 2024 if they deem it to be feasible now what could nintendo be using to determine if it's actually feasible there's a lot of things that go into this part of it is how many units can you have ready and how quick can you have them ready so mass production how many are being made you obviously don't want to launch with only like a million made you're going to want to have some banked up you don't want to have you know sellouts and make this extremely hard to get like playstation 5 was yeah it's going to sell out at launch but you want to be able to quickly restock and be able to try to come close to hitting demand so that's part of it you know how quickly can we get enough of them made and the amount of games that are ready 
right? You have to have a good lineup and a good launch lineup and a good plan for lineup of games. Now, we saw this with Nintendo Switch, so it's obviously going to be important to Nintendo that they have those games lined up from themselves and probably from third parties. And obviously, just it being the right time to launch. Now, industry consultant and analyst Dr. Sirkin Toto told Video Game Chronicle that from a business perspective, the system launching at all in 2024 just is kind of obvious because there's a 16.5% decline in hardware sales this fiscal year and a 15.9% in software sales. So this is just off of Nintendo's numbers. So these are just pure facts that there is a decline. And he does say that most analysts expect next fiscal year that those numbers are going to drop even more, which just makes sense. It's been dropping every year since 2020. So yeah, there's going to be a bigger decline. So it does make 2024 the perfect time to launch something before you sort of lose all of that good Nintendo Switch momentum and enter into the milking years like they did with Wii, right? Where we had some, you know, we're only selling 5 million this year and we're only selling like 100 million software. Like, yeah, Nintendo wants to obviously get something out while they still have momentum. So what what's the big deal from all of this reports? Well, basically the system's powerful. That That is the biggest takeaway is this new system from Nintendo, whatever they call it, Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo Swatch, Super Switch, uh, the Nintendo Focus, you know, stupid names that have been thrown out there. It doesn't matter. Whatever they call this, what's very clear is that it is powerful. Also, I want to clarify that in both of these reports, it does note that the system is portable and dockable so they they wanted to really clarify this is like a switch it can be taken with you it is not a standalone box under your tv so just to clarify like that that was something in these reports as well didn't think it was as noteworthy to bring up but just to remind people we're not talking about a, a box like a playstation 5 or xbox series x so but but what's clear is that when you're hearing comparisons to xbox series x and playstation 5 it's not obviously that this system is as powerful as those it's that it has the right new feature sets that those other systems don't have access to playstation 5 and xbox series x don't have access to dlss they just don't so it has the right feature set with the more mature ray tracing cores that actually make this thing comparable. Now, this has nothing to do with how much RAM is in the system, how much VRAM is in the system. It has nothing to do with the available storage and what kind of storage they're using, or the cartridge sizes, or the screen, did they improve the controllers. There's so many things we don't know. Like, we don't even know the exact specs of this thing. But what we do know is that the takeaway from those being showcased, these two demos, is they walked away impressed unfazed, unworried about the future of Nintendo because they are providing a powerful system, maybe even more powerful than some of these developers actually expected. Let's just say they walked away impressed. When you can showcase a demo that was intended to show the power of Unreal Engine 5 on a PlayStation 5 and you put it on this platform and it's almost indiscernible. That is impressive. So I just have to sit back and say, I am very, very excited about what this means. Very excited about what sort of third party support we're going to get. And honestly, most excited to see what Nintendo does with this level of power, man. Can you imagine what that 3D Mario is going to do with this. Can you imagine what the next Zelda game is going to do with this? Can you imagine what Monolith Soft is going to be able to do with this level of hardware? The only question left in my head is, what do they charge for this thing? How did they get so, this much power packed in? You had, clearly having to use some of the latest and greatest technology from NVIDIA to pull this off. How did they do it? And that didn't NVIDIA give it to them at an affordable price. And if NVIDIA gave it to Nintendo at an affordable price, is it because NVIDIA wants to tout this system as a showpiece because it would be the only dedicated gaming hardware on the planet that isn't a PC or laptop that features NVIDIA technology? And NVIDIA probably wants to boast that fact. Hey, this little engine that could, it's as good as that PlayStation 5 that you just bought. Again, it won't be true from a pure technical perspective. I don't want to get crazy here. This is not going to be a 12 teraflop system, blah, blah. But the point is, it has the right components. 
it has the right makeup to punch above its weight. So I'm I'm just gonna sit back. We gotta get more and more and more details, but guys, this is exciting. So give me your thoughts on this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.